wildlife photography in the big city, I used a wide-angle lens to photograph a hummingbird right in the middle of a bustling metropolis home to millions of people, and I'm going to take you behind the scenes to show you how I did it. Amigos, I'm Greg Basco, a professional nature photographer and workshop leader based in Latin America. A couple of years ago, I started a novel passion project to photograph hummingbirds with wide-angle lenses. That's been a fun technical endeavor and has yielded some very cool results so far. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took my nature photography gear downtown for a wide-angle photo of a sparkling violet ear hummingbird pollinating a super cool flower. Earlier this year, I traveled from my home base of Costa Rica to one of my very favorite countries, Ecuador, to lead two of my annual photo tours. Ecuador is a true biodiversity powerhouse with an amazing number of species packed into a broad range of ecosystems, from the steamy rainforest of the lowland Amazon basin to the misty cloud forest where hummingbirds reach their evolutionary apex, and all the way up to over 6,500 meters above sea level where snow-covered volcanoes tower above the equator. In between my photo workshops, I scheduled some time to rest up a bit, but also to enjoy the capital city. Quito lies a 50 kilometer long valley at over 9,000 feet above sea level in the Andes Mountains. And the area may have been inhabited by indigenous peoples as early as 10,000 years ago. The Inca Empire moved northward from Peru and invaded and wrested control of the valley from a confederation of local indigenous groups in the 1400s. And in 1534, the Spaniards arrived and defeated the Inca general Rumanyawi, who hid Incan treasures and ordered the city burned to the ground before his forces retreated in order to avoid looting by the Spaniards. On those very same ruins, the Spaniards founded the modern city of Quito, whose full name is the Muy Noble y Muy Leal Ciudad de San Francisco de Quito, the very noble and loyal city of San Francisco of Quito. This city with the long name is the oldest capital city in South America. The city's historical quarter was declared one of the first UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 1978, and it has been well preserved to this day. Spending time wandering the streets of Old Quito is always a pleasure. Today, the general capital area is home to around 3 million people, but it feels even bigger than that as houses and apartments and offices seem to go on forever. A lot of the growth is taking place north of Old Quito in the area called New Quito. This is the city's business district, and it's a vibrant hub of restaurants, shops, offices, government buildings, high-rise apartments, upscale malls, and a beautiful 165-acre park called La Carolina. This gem of a city park is home to various public sports fields and courts, jogging and biking paths, cultural activities and events, and a myriad of food vendors. It's also home to the Quito Botanical Garden, and a really cool plant that attracted me to spend some time trying to photograph a hummingbird right in the middle of this bustling metropolis. Years ago, in a highland reserve in the mountains above Quito, I saw an endemic bromeliad called Puya glomerifera. I was immediately attracted by the unusual jade color of the flowers. Hummingbirds are visual pollinators and usually seek out red, yellow, and orange flowers. But hummingbirds can see in the UV spectrum as well. And these blue-green bromeliad flowers sure were attracting the hummingbirds. On that day years ago, I took a few nice telephoto shots of a shining sunbeam and a black-tailed train bearer and even a giant sapphire wing pollinating the flowers. Ever since that day, I've search for another chance to go for a different type of hummingbird photo at this bromeliad. But I've never found the right opportunity. So when I saw that same bromeliad species with open flowers right in the botanical garden downtown earlier this year, the gears in my little brain started spinning and I thought that this could be a cool addition to my wide angle hummingbird portfolio. So I loaded up a backpack with a bunch of photo gear and strolled through the traffic and tall buildings, the crowds and the food vendors in the park and then into the Zen oasis of the Botanical Garden. So, what does a nature photographer do when he has a day off in the city? You can tell we're in a city because look at these fancy threads. I don't dress like this in the forest. I'm here at the Quito Botanical Gardens with my friend Frank Pichardo, who's behind the camera. And I had an idea. Frank and I got really excited when we saw these flowers, which are called Puya. Uh, that's the genus of bromeliad to which these flowers belong. Puya means uh, point of a spear in the Mapuche Indian language. They're super cool flowers and they're pollinated by hummingbirds. Even right here in the middle of the city, we've seen a sparkling violet ear visiting them. So part of my little project of uh, wide angle hummingbird pictures, I decided to set up. I have my Canon R5 here. I have a Canon 14 to 35 millimeter 
wide angle zoom lens. I have a polarizing filter on there. And I have a Godox flash transmitter in the hot shoe, and I have two Godox flashes here on the sides to help me illuminate. And then I have a Velo wireless remote transmitter. So Frank and I have been standing uh, under a cover for about two and a half hours, and I haven't gotten the shot yet. But we're going to be here for another five hours. Is that cool, Frank? And we'll see. Yeah, so that's it. And uh, that's how it works if the hummingbird comes. The sparkling violet ear is the main hummingbird species in Quito, and they visited the Puya bromeliads in the botanical garden about every 20 to 30 minutes. The problem was that there were a number of these plants, all with multiple flowers, right in this area, and I would have to watch agonizingly as I stood there with my remote shutter release, and these beautiful flying gems came in and out and visited every Puya flower except the one on which I was focused. After two attempts on separate days and a paltry four total two-second visits to my flower, I managed a couple of keepers. They're not the best shots in my wide-angle hummingbird portfolio, but they're pretty nice and I was happy to have met the challenge. There are three tricks to doing these kinds of photos. First, you need to have some knowledge about the plants and flowers and how the hummingbird is likely to approach. This way you'll know exactly where to focus. Yes, for these kinds of shots, you want to pre-focus and then turn off autofocus. Second, there's the matter of composition. Using a wide angle lens for wildlife photography means that you have to think more about the larger scene and the elements in it instead of simply pointing a big telephoto lens at a frame filling subject. And third, there's the technical and artistic challenge of balancing the lighting from the strobes with the natural light. Step one in that process is getting to know your flash gear and I have a video on that very subject. Special thanks to my good friend Frank Picciardo for keeping me company. It's always fun to hang out with Frank, and Frank is a great nature photographer, so be sure to check out his Instagram feed. <laughs> cool. Well, we should go get a coffee. My flash just got wet. And thanks also to the Quito Botanical Garden for allowing me to set up all of this gear on two separate days. The staff were super nice. If you are ever lucky enough to find yourself with some free time in Quito, you should definitely pay a visit to the Quito Botanical Garden. I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse behind the scenes of a different kind of hummingbird photo. It took me about 12 total hours of planning, prep, and standing around waiting to take these two shots. While I was waiting for the hummingbirds to show up, I thought to myself, wow, I could be using all of this free time to visit YouTube and hit like and subscribe buttons for the videos I enjoy. You know, I love Ecuador for nature photography, and I think you will too. If you're interested in joining me on an Ecuador photo workshop, I have two spots open for my nature and culture workshop later this year, and also a couple of spots for my brand new Amazon to Andes workshop next February. I'll leave links below. See you next time, amigos. Bye.